Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today, we're going to be learning how to save some buildings that you've made in areas that the Ashlands throws into the ocean. Don't worry, I won't show you any spoilers. And also, this isn't a problem for most players. If you start with a new world, you won't have to deal with any of this. This only applies to people who have built bases in specific areas zones. The Ashlands is forcing the terrain to change. Before I show you how to fix it, I'm going to show you exactly what the problem is. And for even further kicks, I've entirely generated all of the Ashlands terrain on this test server. So we're going to see what happens when the Ashlands update happens when all of the terrain is explored. Now I've saved the world, and I'm actually going to exit Valheim and go into File Explorer. Depending on how you play Valheim, your worlds might be stored in different locations, but this is where mine gets stored on my PC bought from Steam. And now I'm just gonna paste a copy of that test world. Now that I've made a copy of the test world, I'm ready to switch to the Valheim public test branch. I can load this copy world that we made earlier. Let's go for it. As we load into the game world, immediately we fall to the ground because this entire region that we were just in, including our building all the way up there, is now all an ocean. After a couple seconds, everything will start falling to the ground except for certain items that don't have gravity get applied to them. And then if you see off in the distance, that's actually a spire, which means there's a location there. I drowned? Those spires will appear anywhere that there is a location. And as we can see up here, it takes a little bit of time for your stuff to totally finish getting destroyed. But for now, let's address another curiosity. Because we can see that I had already explored all the terrain, right? But it's very much not there anymore, which is quite interesting. I was actually under the impression... I get it. Phew, I'm back. Well, I told you I wouldn't spoil anything. So instead of showing you what I just saw, I'm gonna explain what happened. It may look like the map has regenerated as modern Ashlands, but because it was all already explored, that caused a whole bunch of nonsense to happen. Basically, the terrain is forced into this shape, but it's empty, it's blank. There's pretty much nothing there aside from a couple monsters that are new from the Ashlands. This is all caused by having explored the Ashlands or near it. And this is what's gonna happen. You end up with this bizarre floating forest under the water. It's actually pretty cool. And you can see that as soon as you load into an area, all of the vegetation, except the floating stuff, actually starts to fall down into the ground. We actually have some very valuable information about our world. Because we've loaded this test world, we know what gets removed, what gets destroyed. That in itself is quite useful, because it will allow us to identify the zone that we need to remove bases from. But now, how do we move those bases? Well, we gotta get off the public test branch and back onto the current Valheim. This operation will work best if you do it before the Ashlands goes public, so you can prepare your world by moving the buildings out of the way now that you know the area that gets wrecked. So let's enable all of Plan Build's dependencies and get started. First, we need to opt out of the public test branch and back into regular Valheim in Steam, but then we'll go back into this test folder we made earlier and just copy this world and paste it here. And now we're ready for the next test. Now, the first thing you'll notice is because we used a character on the public test branch, that character is now invalid on regular Valheim. You won't be able to use it until the public test branch goes public. So keep that in mind because you should always use temporary characters on the public test branch for that reason. I just made a new character quickly just so that we can proceed with the tutorial. You can also see that the world we selected on the public test branch will now be marked as bad version. Because as far as the game is concerned, this is the most recent version, that one's in the future. It can't be right. So we'll load up our Ashlands Test Alpha world here. 
And here we are, we're back at this basic structure doomed to plummet into the ocean. Something I noticed is that on loading this character, a new character, and exploring the map, it actually already shows where the Ashlands terrain is gonna be in the update. This makes it much more obvious, looking at the map, that this is all destined to go into the ocean. As you can see, this structure is very small, so it's gonna be easy for us to save it. The more complicated your base is, the longer and more time consuming this process of moving everything around is going to be. To begin, we'll need to use the blueprint rune, which you can make after you've found some stone. All you have to do is use one stone and you can make it anywhere. And this is how you save buildings using the plan build mod. We can start with this add to blueprint selection. This allows us to click on things manually, one by one, or we can hold down control and a circle will show up. This allows us to select the whole building and everything within the circle by clicking. So the most basic you're usually going to do is set up a center point marker exactly where you want the terrain to start. I'm going to put one right there. And then you're also going to add one of these terrain modification markers. I usually just clip it into the center point marker there. This will give you a nice little circle that'll show you the terrain that'll be rised up to meet wherever this gets placed. And then let's change the radius to be something much bigger. Let's go with 12. Now we can see a huge square. We're ready to save this blueprint. By clicking on the edit selection, we'll see a summary. Make sure you confirm that you have everything here, because it's harder to tell when it's not all highlighted in green. You'll be able to see your center markers, terrain mods, and anything else you've added. Now you can click anywhere, and then press save. We're going to name this Test House Ashlands, and then just keep everything else to the default. And here we have our Test House Ashlands. And at first it looks normal, right? But watch what happens if we place it. Boom. All of the terrain got changed. We didn't place it directly, instead it placed to the default, which is these blueprints that you can sort of fill up with stuff as you get the material. But in this case, we don't want it to do that. So what I'm going to do is go into the console and type bp.undo. That's the easiest way to get rid of things that you've placed with the blueprint command. It won't change the terrain, but that really doesn't matter. This time, I'll do the same thing. Except, instead of just clicking normally, I'm going to hold down Control, and then I'm going to click. And as you can see, when you do that, it'll directly place the building. And it's good to test this because you can see, oh, I didn't properly line those up, so it, it broke. And thanks to these iron beams, most of it stays together. But you can see that it would have been beneficial to extend these iron beams further into the ground. Honestly, it might even be worth just throwing a bunch of extra iron beams into your build before you do this, because you can always remove them afterwards. They really play a huge role in helping things stay together. And now that you understand how this mechanic works, all you need to do is move each component of your base, and you can just look at the map. So I know, okay, I have to find somewhere to put this that is not here. And depending on the complexity of your build, this could take a long time or it could be very quick. I would need to redo this and make sure I saved more of these iron beams into the ground or better clipped the stone into the ground above the terrain marker. Pretty much the way it works is if you build something that's all flat, even if it's huge, it's really easy to move. But if you added basements and added a lot of terrain changes, it can get really complicated. So I encourage you in that situation to move things in chunks, one piece at a time. You want to minimize the amount of terrain modifiers you use. They can really be a huge time sink getting them all right. So try not to use them unless you absolutely need to. Alternatively, because you've been so loyal and gotten to the end of the video, I'm going to tell you something that might float your boat. The builders among you probably noticed how these copper nodes and those coastal rocks actually stay floating 
And anything that gets built on one of those things, it's treated as if it's being built out of the ground. So let's say we spawned a couple of these, right? Let's see what happens. I'm gonna place one here, which might be solid enough, but we'll go for one more over here. Let's make this a little bit further down. And the command is spawn rock for coast, but it gets a little bit high up as you can see. So it'll clip into things and that's exactly what we want. We want to clip into enough of this stone that these floating rocks will keep this structure in place. And this might give you some ideas. So let's see what happens if we load this world up into the public test branch. In theory, we'll show up on top of the rock and our base will survive. So here we are, we've loaded into our world, and we can see the terrain has vanished. We're still up in the air. Everything else around us has started to pull, but we're still up here just chilling. Now you can see this base immediately starts falling apart. Yet yeah, this one, because of the glory of iron beams and clipping stone posts, this one is pretty much fine. So you can see how you could use the Infinity Hammer mod and spawn resources and they'll float. The copper nodes will also float. The trees are floating just because I haven't gotten close enough to them yet. And then going back to my spot, now we can see that most of the trees have fallen to the ground. And you can see how the ocean's actually really deep over there. It turns out that you can actually save some of these structures by spawning rocks in the right place. And if you don't want to deal with that, well, you can also just move them out of the way using the plan build mod like I showed you earlier. Thanks for watching, everybody! If you want to support my work, then consider renting your own Valheim server using my link at Zap Hosting, JP Valheim. Playing on a dedicated server is a really great way to sort of enrich your Valheim experience, especially if you have the luxury of having a group or a couple friends that want to play the game as much as you do. It's really a blast when you get to be involved with others instead of dragging them along. You know what I mean? And if you want YouTube to show you more Valheim content, then just like this video or any other video about Valheim, and then YouTube will dish out the content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!